Welcome to episode number three. We're going to talk about paddleboarding, recipes, sharing stories as being a yoga studio or yoga teacher behind the scenes. And I want to invite you to check out the brand new website, lunamoonsupyoga.com. Find all of the information on programs, classes, and the retail to use your code LUNA10. So I hope you guys are really enjoying. I've got new guests coming up too. I got episode number four that will be probably hitting on Thursday. I'm thinking that's going to be the day that podcasts drop. So we're just getting through launching this new podcast and getting it out there. So I hope you guys are enjoying Hi, welcome to the podcast. This is Wave On with Misty. I'm with Luna Moon Stand Up Paddleboard Yoga here in Sylvan Lake, Michigan. And I want to welcome you to this inspirational podcast where you'll find stories behind the scenes, storytelling on and off of the water. We might talk a little bit about paddleboarding, but there's going to be a wide variety of guests coming. And I'm excited to introduce this podcast for you. I hope you enjoy it. Ah, podcast number three here. Uh, I got Cindy Levine with me, and I want to welcome her to the show. She has a lot of knowledge to offer based on being a DIYer, yoga teacher, and just a lot of knowledge, well-rounded um, individual. Uh, welcome. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. Yeah. So how have you been? Good. You know, considering that we're sort of in a shutdown right now, but... Uh... And paddleboarding is sadly coming to an, to an end, I think. Although uh, Misty and I were out on the paddleboard on Friday. Yeah. November 20th. November 20th. <laughs> it was 65 degrees. Yeah. I think there's going to be a couple more in there. Just it'll, Okay. It'll be a surprise, I bet. <laughs> okay. I keep saying this is our last hurrah. And then there's just like another beautiful day. And, and then there's like, another one. All right. Yeah. I, yeah, I know it. It doesn't. It doesn't seem like it today that that would happen, but you never know. It's yeah. Michigan. Okay, it's true. <laughs> so it's how, true. how? I mean, other than so, we we had a lot of paddleboarding, um, which was you know turned out to be a really good um, thing to do. And but w- what else do you have you looking forward um, coming up other than Thanksgiving's on the horizon? But uh, yeah. maybe some uh, recipes or just maybe a new project that you might be, um, you know, willing to start? Um, yeah, so a couple of things I'm doing. Um, well, I'm always doing like uh, DIY stuff, you know, like um, cosmetics and stuff with essential oils. But uh, just recently I've been doing a lot of artwork and painting and um getting back into mala, making malas. So uh, malas are like a, like a spiritual necklace with 108 beads for the purpose of meditation, but people can wear them just, uh, you know, those, the stones have healing properties. So just wearing them and holding them is a really good feeling. So I've just been trying to find things that are, are going to keep me busy during the winter because I know I'm going to miss paddleboarding so much and being outside. Um, but... Uh, we also got snowshoes. <laughs> That's right. So yes. hopefully we'll be doing that. Maybe yeah. hitting hitting the trails with with snowshoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That will be fun. When yeah. you when you make the malas, do you use do you you still make the um the the little tassel part at the end? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I. I uh, That's a difficult part. I use semi precious. Yeah, I've got I've got it down. I've been making them for a long time. Yeah. And uh, I didn't used to hand tie them, but now I hand tie them with a knot in between each bead and say a mantra every time I tie a knot. And uh, the woman that I learned from, she's it's kind of cool. She said, every time you tie a knot in a mala, you untie a knot in yourself. Mm. And I was like, wow, that is like, I know, such a profound thing. So, uh, yeah, and then sometimes you tie it and it's in the wrong place. You got to undo it. And so then I, I thought, and untying a knot physically is so hard to do but obviously like the things the not things that in your own self that you've patterns that you have that are sort of knotted it's it's such a profound thing because it's very hard to untie things in yourself you know wow, so yeah. yeah I use um I use semi-precious stones for different like people will tell me what they want to work on uh what what chakras or just like 
if they need like maybe um, empowering stones, stones for self love, or uh, to speak authentically in their truth, um, the colors that they resonate with. And then I'll like put something together and have them kind of hold it, feel it if they're local, see if they, what they like. And then, yeah, I tie the whole thing together and usually have like a guru, pretty guru bead at the bottom, which is like a little bigger stone and, um, and then a handmade, uh, tassel and the whole thing, like even the tassel tying, there's, like uh, numerology and everything, you know, how many times you wrap the tassel and even when you tie it together and when you cut it, it's just, it's all, there's an, something symbolic in every aspect of that. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Very <laughs> cool. Very cool. A lot of, a lot of patience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely. How long does it take you to make just one? It varies, but like, you know, by the time, if I, once I have it all together, as far as like the beads I want to use and, um, you know, the string and the the stone and the tassel material, then it takes probably an hour or two, depending. Well, that's not You know, tying the knots is hard. Yeah, it's not terrible. Yeah. The knot (laughs) tying is the hardest. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's good. That's really cool. Yeah. That's awesome. What... So what else, um, so I know you, you like kombucha, you make kombucha as well. And, um, yeah. you have, I personally, I think the best vegan chocolate with the essential <laughs> oils, right? Yeah. 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 That's one of my favorite. You make, you make a yeah. lot of things. I do. Yeah. I know. I'm a maker. <laughs> Yeah. You're a maker too. Me We're too. both makers. Yeah, it, it's <laughs> it's hard not to, to to say no. When do you say no? When you're like, you know what? I just have too much on my plate. I can't take on another project. <laughs> yeah, my family's used to it. My projects are all over my house. You know, I just signed up for like 80 art classes for these for the winter. So wow. it's gonna be like, yeah, you know it's good though right we, mm-hmm. we need to stay busy we need to keep our creative juices flowing we, we had a, an amazing summer an incredible summer as far as weather uh, yes, I feel like I, um, I feel like it was our consolation prize for you know being in a pandemic mm-hmm. and then to be able to uh, to be able to get outside and on the water so much like we hardly had any rain I feel like I mean the sun was intense but um yeah, it was just a beautiful summer. So, so beautiful. And it was a great paddle boarding with you. Yeah. Really just like a blessing. Yeah. And this year you, you got your own paddle board, which a lot of people this year ended I got up my doing. Own. Yeah. Yeah. So I about- think I got one of the last ones. <laughs> you got one of the last ones. <laughs> they ran out. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> talk, talk, about, talk about the first time that you came out to paddle board. What was it like? What do you remember? So, um, well, how I got into paddleboarding is kind of interesting. So I, Do tell. um, yeah, so I actually had like a, I love the water and I love swimming. I'm not a great swimmer, but I, I do like, you know, just being in the water. I've always been drawn to water. It's like my place that, uh, like, you know, the ocean being with the sand and like barefoot. I love being barefoot. Um, but I don't like being cold and I, um, I definitely don't like falling in. Uh, when I was a little girl in Florida, like probably the first time I we went to Florida, I got caught in the undertow and I just, uh, was tumbling and, um, panicking, you know, and I remember like you're supposed to put your hand up. So some man like dragged me out of the water. And, uh, and after that, I just like had this fear of like, falling in that feeling of being tumbled and um so i i'm a yoga teacher i've been teaching yoga for uh, since 2008 so that's like 12 years um and i was asked to become the yoga uh teacher for the week at camp michigania so camp michigania is a camp for um university of michigan alumni and um so I said yes, and then they said, okay, well, here's your schedule. You know, you're going to be teaching every day two to three classes, and then on Tuesday and Thursday, we have paddleboard yoga. And I was like, 
oh, okay. <laughs> and I'm, I, I sort of panicked because I'm like, okay, well, I've never really been on a paddleboard. I really don't know how I'm going to teach paddleboard yoga. And they said, you know, if you're not comfortable, you don't have to do it. We can, we can have someone else like the lifeguard just do it. And so, you know, I'm always up for a challenge. So I'm like, oh, no, no, I'll, I can do that. So I called my friend Gretchen. I'm like, she was on a lake. And I, she has pedal boards and I went over and like, can you like run me through some flows, you know, just like, I want to know, like, I want to know what I'm doing. And, um, you know, the whole time I was on her board, I was pretty much white knuckling it. I was, I didn't tell her, but like, I think I ended up, uh, you know, in like reverse side angle, your butt is on one, one side of the board, like you're more, your heavy part of your body is pretty much on one side of the board. And so I flipped over and fell in. That was the first time I like fell in mm. and felt that like, you know, that tumble. And I got out and I was like, ah! you know, I didn't tell her, but in my mind, I'm having like panic attack. How am I going to teach this class? You know? Right. And then I probably so got to Michigania, probably didn't sleep the entire night. Um, because, Well, number one, it wasn't like super warm out. And I was thinking, oh my gosh, if I fall in, I'm going to be freezing. I hate being cold and I hate that feeling of being tumbled. And I hear I'm supposed to be the teacher. And how am I going to continue to teach the class when I'm panicking? Yeah. So, uh, didn't sleep all night, got there and, um, it's on Walloon Lake and Walloon Lake is like, it's just beautiful. It's like you can see to the bottom. It's something unusual with, uh, the uh, mollusks or whatever they have, those zebra zebra mussels or something. So there's like very little, it's sad, there's very little fish probably, but yeah, it almost looks like, like it's just unreal looking, the water. Um, so I got out there, you know, very nervous, um, dressed in like a onesie, like, or onesie, how do you pronounce that? Those long pants, you know, um, Mm-hmm. I have like a long sleeve shirt on because I'm thinking I'm going to be freezing. And it is like the most gorgeous sunrise and the, the ah, like most good. like water like glass. Mm-hmm. And the lifeguard is like putting all the boards out with little um, weights, you know, for the anchor. Yeah. And these people show up, my heart's beating out of my chest. <laughs> and they made us all wear a life jacket, which was good because, you know, when you wear a life jacket, you can't go too far down, you know, if you fall. Right. Anyway, long story short, I took them out. I, I um, you know, it's like fake it till you make it, right? I did it to the yoga flow that Gretchen had taught me to teach. It was unbelievably gorgeous. The water was warm. The sun was warm. Um, the people were so nice. They loved it. And I loved it. And then I was like, sort of like started my, I don't know, you want to call it a healthy addiction to it. Okay. And then, um, when I, then when I found out that you were, um, doing it on the water and so then I'm like, I want to do it. I want to do it, but I don't want to be like that yoga teacher that falls in every time (laughs) or is panicked about falling in. But, uh, yeah, I came to your house and you had the pot out and that was so cool um, how you have the middle pod and everybody hooks in. I always tell yeah. people it's like a flower. It looks yeah. like a flower. Misty stands in the middle and, it is, yeah. you know, we anchor in like little petals and your boards were inflatable. So I had never been on an inflatable and it feels like a yoga mat because it's wide and so, sort of like the texture of the the board just feels very much like a yoga mat. And so I think I kind of forgot after a few moments, I mean, you're very, you know, how you um, start out and how you are very calming um, made me feel really comfortable. And I just, uh, I just loved it. I was like, this is, and then Shavasana is like laying there like, okay, I think I found my place. Like this, is my place. First of all, yeah. I love Sylvan Lake. My my father in law had a house there, and I kind of raised my kids on Sylvan Lake, and um, so I've always loved that lake. But um, at the end, just like the water lapping your hands and feet, and feeling that kind of release, and you're being in nature. There's nothing like it, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, so I think I came out. I came out to your class quite a bit, and then paddling with you quite a bit that summer, and then. I can't remember if it was 
do if we do that for two summers and then I got my board or one summer. I can't remember. It's all running together. Uh oh. It's all running together. <laughs> <laughs> it's a paddle board. Oh my it's gosh. a paddle board mashup. But yeah. um yeah, then uh, uh oh I know. Um I'd like I wanna turn some other people on to this. So I became like <laughs> I became like, um, you know, I would like call everybody and say like, you got to try this. And everybody thought it was really kind of crazy. You were, but, like, you were the Pied Piper. <laughs> I was the Pied Piper paddleboard. So I because, got a lot of people out there. Well, because I, it's so true because I would be standing at the dock and this was, this was more or less last summer. I was standing at the yeah. dock and Cindy's walking over, but she's the first one. And then everyone was following her and, you know, and everyone's chatting it up, talking and following you over. Where are we going? What is, oh, and no. then they show up. Oh my gosh, what is this? Yeah. <laughs> they're yeah. taking away. The they're class. taking away. <laughs> I would go teach a class and I'd be like at the end of the class, I'm going, you know, yoga class. And I'd be like, okay, you guys, I'm going paddleboarding today if anybody wants to join me. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we had a few people like say, I want to go. All right. right, we're leaving in like, you know, probably an hour. So come oh, join me. That's so cool. <laughs> there's there's so much to it. But it, uh, one of the point, points that you made where you're, you, you felt, you know, pressurized to teach the class and there's these people showing up. And I mean, would you say that that's one of, one of the times teaching that you felt it was very memorable because of the way you felt and just, you know, how you have some of those classes like that where it just sticks out in your mind and – you're you're just trying to not let it surface you're keeping it back yeah. you know yeah for sure you know I think like being a yoga teacher too like in the beginning how it feels is like honestly you know okay so spoiler alert most yoga teachers when they start out are pretty much like fake it till you make it you know they know a lot but they don't know everything and, and not that any of us know everything but um you know, there's so much nervousness because you're, you're, you're leading a group of people who are trusting, they're putting their trust in you, you know? Yeah. So, um, so yeah, it was kind of like, took me back to the day where I was just starting teaching yoga and, but, but, and I was very afraid then, you know, and where they say fear is like, uh, uh, what do they they say about fear? They say it's either forget everything and run or face everything and rise, you know? Right. And I am not, I don't run. I, you know, I'm definitely like, give me something to, as a challenge, you know, and I'll do it. And so, um, yeah, I do think that that, that was uh, something that I'll always remember, but I never thought that I would be like as into it as I am. Yeah. And I think, uh, it helped. I got my sister in law into it. Like she, when I was like the Pied Piper, I called her and she's like, "Yeah, there is no way you are getting me on a paddleboard." And right. I'm like, "Come on, just try it. You, you know, once you get out there, you'll see. And if you don't like it, you could just lay there the whole time. You don't have to do anything. No one's forcing you to do anything. Mm-hmm. You know, you could just lay on it and just enjoy the sun, like it's um your little chaise lounge, right? And then she also, surprisingly, like I think she surprised herself. That she really liked it. And then she was the one that called me, um, I think it was like May or June, and said, Costco's got paddle boards. I think they're running out. Let's get one right now. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and yeah. then she uh, had him sent to her house. And yeah, we. I went out this summer probably, <clears throat> I mean, some, some weeks, probably five times, of, you know, five days. Right. And and I'd be we'd be gone for three hours sometimes. You know, oh my gosh, there, yeah, like, yeah. And I, then I, also, I love those yeah, stories though. No, I love those stories of of someone that doesn't doesn't think they're gonna do well or they're afraid and they overcome it. And then it, it's everything that you just described about ju- the environment. You know what they saw, er, and every time is different. And I, and I say that over and over because it's so true. I'm, I, I can't lie. I mean, it's a different experience for me as well every time. Yeah. You know? And I, I think that water, first of all, being in nature. Uh, so I had done this uh, girls mentorship this past 
during the quarantine, actually, um, with some yogis or, and women from um, a bunch of different states. And a lot of it was talking about how nature, you know, using nature as a healer. And for, for yeah. me, water especially is a healer. Um, I think just being at Sylvan, I was kept being drawn to it. I was healing from the loss of my, my dad was had a pretty traumatic death. And um, it was something I was struggling with a lot. And it kind of affected, you know, all of my life. And um, I was also dealing with a loss of uh, uh, sort of a job. I, I switched from one yoga studio to another. It was not my choice. And uh, it was a heartbreak for me. Um, it was, you know, shifting one, one yoga community to another. And that was really, it was like draining my emotional energy, just trying to, you know, be the best yoga teacher I could be, but like feeling so hurt inside. Mm-hmm. And something that when I came out to your classes, something shifted. Every time I would go, I would feel like that soothing feeling of the water. I I just did not didn't want to leave. I even if I, my feet were just in the water, even if I just stood on the sand and was near the water, something about it felt like it just swallowed up my grief, and it just felt like I each time was like breaking free a little bit. And so, yeah, I know I know for mental health. Being in nature is such an important thing, but especially like the sun and the water is like, it's so healing. Yeah. It's and so then, good you know, you. especially during, during the pandemic when, you know, there's a lot of fear, right? Going on. We, we didn't know what was going to happen, how long this was going to go on. And during the shutdown, everybody had to wear masks everywhere they went. Even when you went for a walk, you weren't really sure, like, are you supposed to wear a mask when you go for a walk? Like, are you going to encounter other people and how far away? But we could go on the paddle boards, you know, no mask. You could be out for hours and not even see people. Like, seemed like nobody, a lot of people were not out on the water. Mm-hmm. We had, like, the lakes to ourselves, I felt like, this summer. Mm-hmm. And um, I just felt like it, it just felt like normal and we free and then, you know, we established some really good friendships, you know, you and I became close and my sister-in-law for sure. And I became close, closer and it was time for us to just talk, yeah, share things with each other that, you know, cause you're out there for at least a couple hours mm-hmm. and, uh, just like really, I just feel it. I felt like it was so good for the soul. Well, I'm so grateful. Well, I've heard, I've heard that a few times and I did even witness over the summer because more people were bringing their friends and family once they did it once. And then they could actually even build their own little group and it would just be them. And I, I had one lady, she was just so stressed out. She called me even the day before. And just told oh. me, just, just, you know, unwound on the phone with me about everything that she was going through. And then she came out and she, we were, it was a Friday night sunset and there was a couple girls, younger girls, and they were playing around. They were satisfied. We didn't even go very far. We kind of drifted around a little bit. And then the girls, they just wanted to try yoga poses and stuff. It wasn't really a yoga class. I, I was just you know, teaching them paddle boarding and, um, taking them out. But the one lady, she oh. literally got on the board and she laid, she laid down and just like you said, stared at the sky. And I, you know, yeah. I, would, I would look over and check on her and they're like, <laughs> how's she doing? And I was like, well, she's, she's hanging out. And she was completely satisfied with that. She didn't, yeah. she didn't need anything else. She just wanted to chill out. And, yeah. you know, and I, it, 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 at the time I thought, you know, not only is she okay, but is she getting enough out of this experience? And I think the one lady, one of the older ladies, she looked and she was like, she's, she's fine. You know, like she's just chilling that's out. What she needed. That's what she needed. Yeah, she just, that's what she needed. Yeah. And yeah she, we, we need to give ourselves permission sometimes that we just, uh, if we just need to be laying there and just like staring at the sky, like when do you ever do that? Honestly, when do you ever do that in your life? Lay down, like when you were a little kid, you did. You'd lay right in the grass and you'd look at the sky. But as adults, like, we hardly touch the ground with our bare feet. I mean, most people, you know, you and I probably touch the ground a lot with our bare feet. But, um, you know, most adults are in their shoes and they're doing stuff and they're not even looking up. Like, we're so busy. We don't even look at nature, you know, listen to the birds or, like, see all the, the geese 
you know, gather before their flight. Um, you know, there's so much to actually look at. And for me, like this summer was like the summer of the hawk. So every time I went paddleboarding, every time there were hawks over me, mm-hmm. I would like watch for them. I'm thinking, okay, where's the hawk today? <laughs> I feel like it's like a sign from, you know, spirit. Like I'm with you. Because yeah. every day I would see a hawk multiple times, but especially while I was on the board. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, how how long would you say that you have always done holistic or healthy options or uh, I guess what, take it back, like what was something that triggered you and then it, it was a, it was a milestone that you just kept building upon? Um, I think I was before my time. So when I was in college, I, I would look at the, the food in the cafeteria and just be like disgusted by like how, you know, one day it was like beef something and the next day it was like goulash and then the next day it turned into spaghetti and the next day it was like lasagna with the same meat all week. And it was like, I couldn't, uh, I just couldn't stomach it. So I stopped eating meat. I became a vegetarian when I was like 18, I guess, 17. I was 17 when I started college. So 17 or 18 and then um I stayed a vegetarian for a long time and then when I was pregnant oh so when I had my first child I um I don't think they told me to eat meat but I I was really into organic stuff I was probably one of the first it was before Whole Foods and everything was like all over the place we had Betty's grocery and I had to drive pretty far to go get it but I would get like organic milk and organic juice um I, I did I did feed my kids uh, chicken and fish, but um, I think I was still vegetarian then. And then, you know, of course, like the medical profession, they are not always up to speed with that. And so when I had my second child, I had four boys. I had my second child. They're like, yeah, you're anemic. You need to have meat. So I did start to eat meat. And then, um, so he was, let's see, um, he was, born probably I don't know 10 years before I started teaching yoga mm. and so I maybe I ate meat for seven to ten years not not very much because I didn't really like it um but then when I uh 2000 and see, 2008 I became so I started practicing yoga in 2003 um but I was also always like very health conscious and conscious of like stuff I put in my environment then I um so I, pra- I was practicing yoga. People thought it was crazy too. 2003, like yoga was not- yoga is not what it is right now. Um, it wasn't very it, it wasn't very popular. My family had thought that I like joined a cult. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Um, it was hard and to then- get into yoga, like like what you're saying back around that time frame, because it wasn't I mean, really it was around like, much. It was in Michigan. We had we had. Um, uh, one studio that was like, you know, brought pretty much the teacher there is pretty much the teacher that taught everybody in this right. area. Yeah. And so um, that's where I started. I just went to Whole Foods when that was Whole Foods was around and I picked up a coupon. It was like $99 for 99 days. I'm like, I'll try this thing. I thought it was like a stretching class, you know. Mm-hmm. I went with a full on black sweatsuit, no mat, no water. <laughs> I thought I was going to die to the <sighs> hardest class, absolutely hardest class. And like, probably a hundred and five degrees, you know, it was like 80 people in the room. I was like front row, no one to watch. It was a flow on your own vinyasa. I was like, what the hell is this? <laughs> you know, <laughs> what did I get myself into? Right. And then I don't know why I went back, but, um, I, um, I, um, so I, from there I don't know why but I did I did go back and then I sort of became kind of addicted to it you know and uh, then 2008 I did teacher tra- I graduated from teacher tra- the oath of ahimsa so ahimsa is you know the uh, oath of non-harming anything and I was really happy because it was like I was back to me I was um, back to being a vegetarian um, actually a vegan and stopped, you know eating anything with anything that had a mother anything that came from a mother. So no, no eggs, no cheese, nothing, Mm -hmm. Um, which was 
which really worked for me for a long time. And then, you know, just developing recipes that, you know, and then my husband actually ended up having a really bad case of gout. And so when we researched it, the diet for people with gout is also a vegan diet, pretty much. Anything that's like, um, that, uh, like meat and dairy and, um, you know, certain like alcohol, like the things that you, that's the oath of yoga, you know, no intoxicants. So he basically ended up um, eating in alignment with what what I was eating. So alignment. So we were both um, vegan and we both gave up alcohol and not that I drank much, but, um, and so then I, I was like, okay, on this bandwagon of, you know, vegan cooking and trying to, uh, come up with recipes that my kids could eat too. So, um, yeah, that's, that really kind of did kickstart, I, I guess, kickstart my healthy lifestyle again, you know. Yeah. And, yeah, then and then you, it probably, it, well, it gets you to think of recipes and stuff when you're really trying to, you know, uh, cater to different people in the family, in the house. So, yeah, you know, if you and we have a house of, of kids with food allergies, so that was, it was challenging for sure. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But you have you have like some really good recipes. Like, I mean, you've told me about so many <laughs> just during paddleboarding, of course, but <laughs> uh, even dog dog bones like you shared one with me and I made it and Luna really liked it. And yeah. You know, because I'm always trying to find different recipes for for something for her as a treat, um, something that's healthy that she can have. And uh, yeah, yeah, you had the it was a sweet potato and uh, oats, right? I think I used pumpkin. I used canned pumpkin, oats, and uh, people use peanut butter. We can't have peanut butter in my house, so I use I use sunnut butter. But yeah, it was really good. Like. You my used, dog loved it. You used what what kind in placement of peanut butter? Sun sunflower seed butter. They call it sun nut butter. Sun, okay. Okay. Yeah. So I use that. I mean, but most people probably can use peanut butter. Yeah, I don't know if you do you post with your uh, with your um podcast. Yeah. Like, we can post a recipe. Yeah, you, know, you wanna share you, you wanna share a recipe or two with uh the listeners? Sure. Okay. Sure. All right. Sure. Well, um, and then, yeah, well, um, which you, I could share like, a. what's the most what unique you to- thing you <laughs> had, you had something unique recently it was with, uh, yeah, you did. It was, uh, something with, I think it was lasagna and you, you surprised everyone. They're like, was, is meat in this? Remember? <laughs> yeah. 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 I'll what share did my you lasagna. use? Um, so I, <laughs> I like soft boil carrots and broccoli and then I grind them up and I put them in the pasta sauce and everybody always thinks it's meat <laughs> but it's not it just has like that texture you know yeah um and it it came from like so way back I would like try to sneak vegetables in any way I could you know yeah keep my head kids healthy and that's uh yeah so that it does give it like a meaty texture I could share the lasagna I did a um, yeah. I did a, so we have vegans in my house and dairy eaters and non-dairy eaters. So, um, uh, I actually made one of each. I made, you know, the gluten-free vegan lasagna and then the regular cheese and regular noodles. But I did the, the broccoli uh, carrots for both of them. So they both were meat-free. It must, it must yeah, be the broccoli it must, that make, that people think it's the texture of meat. Yeah, the broccoli and the carrots together, for some reason, it's like, they're like, really? There's no meat? I'm like, really? Look at me. Would I put meat in your lasagna? <laughs> I don't think so. I'll have to try. Yeah. I'll have to try that myself. I haven't done that one. Usually, I try to get, uh, you know, for the pl- replacement of meat. Not that I really need some sort of meat texture. I, I don't at all. Uh, but, of mm. course... You know, it's one. It's sharing in the in the same household, right? So, kind of. Oh yeah. You know, so you use the. It beyond, makes it heartier. 
Yeah, well, yeah. that's true too. You know, you try to make the um, well, sometimes tacos or um, maybe like a casserole or something that you know you're trying to um, use some additives that would be like a meat replacement. So the like crumbles, yeah. like the um, beefless crumbles. I try to get the ones that don't have a lot of soy. Uh, that's yeah. more of the pea protein in it. So have you found any that are? Have you found any that are like not a lot of soy? Usually at the health food store. Okay. Yeah, and if you okay. if you take a look and it'll say gluten free, soy free, uh, no dairy. You can find that the and usually it's pea protein with with cauliflower or sweet potato, um, mm-hmm. black beans, that type of thing. Um, yeah, so cal- I think cauliflower is also um, a great sort of meat substitute you could hide too because it has that hearty feeling, that right. texture and like heaviness to it. Like broccoli and carrots do, you could probably use cauliflower too. It, it doesn't have a lot of flavor, so it absorbs probably the flavor of the sauce. So you could do that, but I'll share. I'd be happy to share the lasagna and then maybe like, yeah, um, for sure. I don't know if you want like a DIY, like, um, so I use a lot of essential oils in my life. Um, I use them. Um, I uh, know, like recently, um, as recently as last night, actually, <laughs> um, I, I, um, so I never had trouble sleeping or anything like that. But like, you know, I've used essential oils for everything, like thieves, you know, like to clean or to help boost the kids' immune systems. And then in the chocolate, I put like peppermint or orange. You know, I use them for cooking. Yeah, I um, love those. I, I use- love those peppermint and <laughs> orange chocolate. It's just really good. Yeah, I'm that's not amazing. a sweets person either, really. But I like. I do no. like that. Yeah, that's so good. It's just like enough sweet, and then. um so I do, I might, if you open up my medicine cabinet, it is mostly essential oils, basically, you know, um, like I'll put on Valor, like a, it's like a, like almost like perfume. Yeah. It's just like meant to make you feel like empowered. Like if you're taking on a meeting that, you know, is going to be challenging or something. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I have actually, you know, come up with some kind of, uh, I know you do the lip balm. I love your lip balm. Oh, thank um, you. <laughs> so I've done candles. and can- I mean, candles are a little touchy with essential oils. You never really know how much you're going to smell mm-hmm. of the throw because it's different than a fragrance. But we know that fragrance is, like, really bad for our endocrine system and um, and uh, your, for your hormones, you know. It's like it's, it's a hormone disruptor. So um, I could share like a cosmetic product that I've come up with. So like I've done body butter. Um, uh, I'm trying to think. I've done some essential oils for the bedroom. (laughs) Um, You know, just certain uh, lotions and potions that I can think of one to share with your your audience if you'd like. Yeah, that would be great. Um, Yeah, yeah, the oils... The oils, I, so one of the th- things that I've seen are, I guess that just from experience that the fragrance is always uh, more dominant in the smell. And then when, yeah. you, when, when you're trying to add the oil into like a cosmetic thing, uh, butter or even the lip balms, it's not as strong. It's like you, right. you have to use, you have to use more of it or yeah. it might even smell just a tad different than what we're used to so maybe pine for example pine, oh yeah you've always yeah. been you've you know based on maybe whatever fragrance plug-in or candle you think pine's supposed to smell like that and then you smell the oil and you're like that's that's definitely a little different than what you're right you know i yeah. mean why is that you think well, I think fragrance is man-made. You know, it's made in a in a factor in a chemistry set, mm-hmm. basically, or someone's putting it together, like synthetic. And so, probably a lot of us have gotten used to like those little car things that our parents used to hang in the car, or um, those plug-ins. You know, that right, we, yeah. we got used to smelling things that were not. But certain things, obviously, like cinnamon, is going to smell the same. Mm-hmm. Um, peppermint is going to smell the same, you know, those are the things that like they use peppermint oil in cooking and candy, like the real peppermint oil and real cinnamon, you know, things that we all 
vanilla, things that we're all like um, used to, you know, and maybe the things like pine and that you smell like, I don't know, like cleaning product and stuff that's a synthetic might smell different to you. But, you know, you can count on the, the things like lemon and orange and tangerine and the grapefruit one actually smells kind of different. But um, most of them, I mean, they're very intense, right? Because it takes so much, like the rose, it takes so many roses to make one little five milliliter um, bottle of it. And which makes the price a little bit higher for. Oh, yeah. For the real thing. Yeah. Definitely. So, uh, yeah, so I think when it's that much, it's so intense. It's, uh, you know, it's not going to smell like when you dilute it. Once you dilute it, you put it into a candle or into, like, a lotion. Plus, you know, you're using, like, a body butter. You're using, like, cocoa butter or shea butter. Those have their own smell. <laughs> but I think that um, when, you, when you get used to it, you know, um, and you and you dilute it, it's good for you when it's diluted you're not really supposed to use it when it's so intense on your body so you're always, actually always supposed to dilute essential oils before you apply them to your skin mm-hmm. um yeah especially but, uh, peppermint yeah skin yeah because strong. we can get really we can get sensitized to them and you know have reactions if we use them straight from the bottle but yeah i, I love my essential oils <laughs> i love my essential oils but and i do occasionally cook with them so i will share a a diy cosmetic and i'll share um the lasagna oh that sounds awesome we would love that (laughs) (laughs) and i'd like to share um, to like in closing i'd like to share a little uh kind of a quote that i found okay perfect yeah it's called the touch of the wild nice something wild and beautiful happens when you start to love yourself and embrace every single piece of who you are. I think it's something like freedom. And I, I'm saying it's short, short and sweet, but I, I think that that's what paddleboarding and yoga helps me feel. And that's what I want other people to feel. It's like this freedom to be in their body, embody their body, love their body the way it is, to be in nature, to love nature, and to heal from nature, you know, allow nature to give you those tools to let go and to find freedom. Because ultimately in this life, I think that's what, what it's about is freedom to be yourself, freedom to feel and, um, you know, ultimately be, be here to do what you're meant to do, find your purpose, you know, and that's, that's what freedom leads you to. So (laughs) that's that's my great. Thank yeah, thank you for for sharing that. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, yeah, and um, I mean, I'd like to at least add to that as far as uh, being even out on the water with um, the groups of people that I saw, very supportive of one another too. Once you you know, it's like once you leave land, and you know you're on your own little vessel, and you know, ironically, it was the perfect social distancing for a summer, but that's, that's the way paddleboarding is all the time, you know, but so supportive of one another, you know, whether they were coming out for their first time and then, you know, people sharing their own experiences as well, you know, as a motivator. Definitely. Yeah. Very cool. Well, thank you. Thanks for, um, sharing all of your, uh, knowledge and, um, We'll be looking forward for uh, a recipe. <laughs> Maybe you can get a photo or <laughs> something of <laughs> of you making it. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for coming on and thanks for being here. I really appreciate it. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks, everybody, for listening to Wave On. I hope you're really enjoying. If you're feeling super inspired, please leave a review. Don't forget to hit subscribe and check out the brand new website luna moon sup sup yoga.com that's where you'll find your classes and retail don't forget to use your code 
Lunatin for those brand new lip balms that I have out, new labels, and brand new beanies and long sleeves if you're feeling inspired for gift giving. I would much appreciate it. I hope you guys are really enjoying and having fun, and I will be on with episode number four soon.